If you're going to invest in the Cleveland market, you have to know what you're getting yourself into. You have to understand that market, get the right expectations. But how can you do that if you don't live there, if you're far away, if you're out of state, if you're out of the country? I'll tell you how, right here on Holton Wise TV. That's what I do for you, and I'm doing it today. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show. This is Whole Wise TV. I'm James Wise, and today I'm helping my man Alex Alex is not only an out-of-state investor. Alex, you are an out-of-country investor, dog. You are coming to us, coming to the Cleveland market from India, man. That is, that's far. That's pretty far, right? So, you're an investor who wants to invest in Cleveland, and you want to do so from India, right? So, you teamed up with me. You teamed up with my team. We are your boots on the ground. We help you with property management. We represent you as your broker, insurance, title, I don't know, management, landscaping, plumbing, freaking sweeping up stuff, painting. Do we do it all, right? That's, that's step one, right? You got your boots on the ground, people. You got the team you're going to work with, right? Because you're in India. You can't physically show units. You can't paint walls, things of that nature, right? But before that, right, that's important. But before that, we have to set the expectations on the market, right? I have no idea what real estate goes for where you live, brother. I got no clue. I have no clue what the the policies and this or that and the and the cultural norms uh, having to do with rental real estate or the real estate space in India. No idea, right? Likewise, when you're coming to a new market in Cleveland, you guys need to hook up. You need to hook up with somebody like me who's going to cut it to you straight, right? Because you can give me a list of things you want to do, right? But that doesn't mean you can do them, right? Like, uh, you know, I'd like to play the lottery and win every time, right? But that's not practical, right? So part of what I do in addition to providing you guys all those services to, to get the job done is I set you up with the proper expectations so you know what you're getting yourself into. And I'm going to do that with you, dude. You have told me that you want to get quads, four-unit apartment buildings, which is great. I love quads. It's my favorite type of investment due to the best type of financing. You want to get quads, okay, in B areas that only require $1,000 of work, hit the 1% rule, meaning uh, like if the property costs $100,000, it's going to rent for at least $1,000 a month. If it costs $200,000, it's going to rent for at least $2,000 a month, right? You want quads. B areas, hit the 1% rule, uh, $1,000 or less uh, of needed repairs, five years or less, less of CapEx items needing to be replaced, such as furnaces, hot water tanks, roofs, and you want them to be in B-grade neighborhoods, right? B-grade neighborhoods, that is in reference to the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods where I graded every neighborhood uh, at an A to F scale in regards to risk. That can be found in the notes here, or you could just Google it. It's also on the tools and resources section of HoltonWise.com, right? So that's your list. Just one more time. B-grade area. Quads. 1,000 or less in upfront repairs. Five years, right? You have to have more than five years left on your big ticket items, and you want to hit the one percent rule. You want to do all that for that budget, 150k. Not gonna happen, bro. That is pie in the sky. There ain't no quads in B grade neighborhoods that are gonna that are gonna hit those goals. You're not even gonna find quads in C and D grade neighborhoods that hit all of those goals, right? So what I did is I made you another video. Uh, where I showed you a B-grade neighborhood because as I'm doing these videos for you today, there's actually only four quads available in B-grade neighborhoods, and there's only four quads available in C or D neighborhoods, right? So we have a total of eight to choose from. So the last video I made, I showed you what concessions you would have to make if you were to stick with your original criteria of staying 
in a B-grade neighborhood, right? And the biggest concession you would have had to make is going to be the budget. Now, this video, I'm going to keep you under budget, right? Property I have for you today is going to be under your $150,000 budget, but you're going to have to give up some of the other stuff. You're going to have to give up condition of the property and the neighborhood quality. Now, this particular property is actually one that's been on the market, off the market, on the market, off the market. I looked at this several times. Uh, a little ways back, it has just hit the market again. The buyer flaked on the listing agent, right? That kind of thing happens, especially with these type of uh, lower-end properties. They're very cheap. We get investors from all over the world that put bids on these things, and for whatever reason, they flake, right? So you're going to want to make your offer contingent on inspection just to make sure we get a full understanding of all the you know, nooks and crannies of the property, understand exactly the condition it's in to make sure the reason they didn't back out was a valid one. And most of the time people back out for, you know, just lack of knowledge going into the deal, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> they obviously were not watching Holton Wise TV, getting an upfront understanding of what they're getting themselves into. Hence the reason for this video, which is why you've purchased your MLS search and analysis package. Um, they obviously didn't do that. That's why the property's back on the market, right? So what we're going to do now, is we're going to take a look at some footage I filmed when I originally analyzed the property. The only thing I would say different uh, from then to now is in talking with the listing agent, he made it very clear that the seller really prefers a cash offer over a financed offer. So here's the footage. Let me know what you'd like to do. You might be wondering why I'm walking around in a bikini. Because this is America, that's why. Land of the free, home of the brave, the land of opportunity. Like the opportunity to click the link below and connect with motivated sellers nationwide. Welcome back. Let's jump right into the property. 3433 West 50th, Cleveland, 44102. It's been on the market six days. It came on the market and then immediately went off the market. I guess the listing agent had somebody go under contract that like immediately fell apart. Now they have listed it at 115 grand, and that is a freaking gift, okay? It's not going to happen at 115K, I'll let you know, right? Because this is a quad, a fully occupied quad on the west side of Cleveland. So we're definitely going to need to spend more than 115. I think we're going to need to take this thing down at $125,000. If you buy it at $125,000, I believe you will make approximately $18,316 a year, right? You finance it, you put down 31 and a quarter, bank kicks in 93. Over the long haul, that could project to a 43.4% cash on cash return or a 15 cap because with these four units, what we would be getting is four units at 750 a piece, right? A total of $36,000 in income. Does that sound freaking amazing? Yeah, of course it does, but that's not where this video is going to end, right? We're not just going to be like, oh, this is amazing. Bye, bye, bye. No, no, no. We got to break it down and like really understand those numbers, right? I see investors, they, they see those type of numbers and they just like, dude, they get blinders and they don't think about anything else, right? Let's talk about this in a more realistic fashion. Yes, all those numbers are achievable. Yes, that's all great. But you have to understand what you're getting with that, though, right? Here is the property. Now, as you can see, it is by no means the Ritz-Carlton, right? Like, you know, you got the fucking door. Like, the listing agent goes there to take pictures of this, and the motherfucking door is, like, ripped off the fucking building, okay? So you have to understand that, right? It's clearly low income, right? We got, like, this is... <laughs> This, this, like, right here was supposed to, used to be a window. They just boarded the sum bitch up, right? All right, this is definitely a low-income investment, okay? Now, with low-income investments like this, you have to understand there is going to be risks, right, to <coughs> the investment, right? Tenants don't always pay their rent on time, this or that, right? Now, the projections I just gave you, that is all four tenants – at full market rent, the 750, I'm factoring in maintenance, repairs, non-payment, things of that nature. But I'm assuming that we're going to get them on Section 8, right? Because this is currently, as it sits, a D-grade neighborhood. However, 
it is my absolute favorite D-grade neighborhood in the Cleveland market, right? Let me pull this up nice and big for you, okay? All right, this is the Clark Fulton neighborhood, folks, okay? Clark Fulton, bada bang, here's the property. And this right here, this is Metro Health Hospital, okay? That's why I really love this investment. Metro Health is putting a billion dollars into that hospital and the surrounding Clark Fulton neighborhood. Billion, be like boy, right? They're doing low-income housing, increasing their, uh, their, their their infrastructure, their building, the whole thing. They're helping out the community, right? So if I'm going to go with a low-income area in Cleveland, this is the low-income area I'm going to go with, right? Currently, right now, you put people in there on Section 8, is there going to be riffraff? Yeah, a little bit. It, it Does this building, when we get back to the inspection report, does it appear that it's got a lot of deferred maintenance? Absolutely, right? Uh, but that said, when you get Section 8, you alleviate your biggest risk with D-grade investments like this one, and that is tenants not paying rent, okay? That's number one. Number two, Cleveland is not necessarily a market where people are looking at uh, going here to this market for appreciation. We're really just a cash flow market. Obviously, with the price points and the numbers, you know, the chart, the numbers are there for cash flow. But what about appreciation, right? Typically, we don't see a lot of appreciation in Cleveland. However, if I'm going to speculate on any type of neighborhood turning around, it's going to be Clark Fulton. Because of that billion-dollar investment, number one, and then number two, if you just pan this off a little bit, right, go a little bit uh, further out, right, we are here, and what is here? Detroit Shoreway, Ohio City, Tremont, right? These are the areas that have gentrified, that have gone nicer. So we are bordering those, and of course, right north of that, we got downtown, and then we got the lake, right? So we're bordering a lot of gentrified stuff. We're getting a billion dollars in there, and the numbers are so impressive that it makes sense to take on a little bit of that D-grade risk. Now, as far as it's currently constructed, right, we're not getting the 3000 in rent just yet. We are getting four tenants all paying, uh, it is four tenants all paying 550 right? So we're getting 2200 in rent, which if you run your numbers in the same way I run um, the projected numbers, it's still cash flowing from day one. Now, those tenants, uh, they want to stay is what the listing agent is saying. Of course they want to stay. They're getting a $200 discount on their house. But they're not all Section 8 tenants, right? So you have to understand that when you pick up an investment like this, you got to think about this one for the long haul. Is it possible that the first year or two of ownership of this will be a little rough? Possibly, yeah, right? If you can get all four of those tenants to stay and then pay the 3000 that's how you could end up with the 43% return, which is great. But this is real estate investing. There's an unlimited amount of variables at all times. Can I guarantee that that happens? No. Do I know exactly how many tenants are going to turn over? No, I don't, right? Uh, that's a risk you're going to have to take. High risk, high return, high reward, right? What I would recommend doing is going in, keeping everybody's rent the same for one year and then going up slowly 50 bucks a pop right you're still cash flowing now and you're not doing anything to create unnecessary artificial turnover because the goal should be to get them up to market rent slowly without creating additional turnovers because those additional turnovers are going to cost you money right do i know how much they're going to be no i don't have the information on what the units look like and more importantly even if i did it wouldn't matter because that's not necessarily what they're going to look like when the tenant actually moves out out. Assuming uh, that they're pretty run down based upon the outside of the building, I, I don't see why you wouldn't be spending five to ten thousand dollars turning those over to get new seven hundred fifty dollar tenants in there. So because of that, you want to try to keep those folks in there as long as you can, right? Because what you're going to lose in not getting market rent right up front, you will gain in not having to do a renovation. So with all of that, I love the deal, right? Is it a perfect property? No. Does it come without risk? No, absolutely not. But, dude, it's freaking priced at $115,000. There's going to be a line of buyers trying to pick this up. So my recommendation is to go $10,000 above list price if you want a chance to take it down. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.